This is the story of Peter, an extraordinary Englishman. He has lived in France for 30 years and has adopted his new country to become a naturalised Frenchman. He is now more French than English, having forgotten many English words. Peter is a shepherd and berger, and spends his days walking with his sheep, grazing them along the many trails of the Languedoc coastline. This story is one with many questions and few answers. What is it that persuades an intelligent, articulate man of worldly experience to settle into the seemingly solitary life of tending sheep? Perhaps he has found something that we ordinary mortals are still searching for. He is self-educated and an ardent reader, having read every book of classical merit worth reading. His occupation is slow, solitary and usually peaceful. His social life is hectic, hosting gatherings of a dozen or more on a very regular basis. He's an impatient man and always moves as a dog trot. But he's satisfied with his lot. The local cooperative provides him with all the wine he can drink. His meat walks before him and vegetables are provided from his adequate gardens. His days start early, frequently before six, and he has the privilege of seeing many sunrises. Peter is a confirmed card-carrying communist. He is not a fool and realises the limitations of this doctrine, but it is a belief which he holds dear and one for which he has unshakable understanding. Peter has a total antipathy towards technology. He boasts to having never used a camera. He never wears a watch. And the thought of using a computer or the internet is a total anathema to him. Another foible is the fact that, as a man who's travelled round the world three times, he's never owned a map.
Peter was born in Liverpool in 1948. He was brought up within earshot of Liverpool's Anfield and lived a comfortable working class life with his parents and elder sister Pat. His early working life was spent serving a joinery apprenticeship, the same trade as his father. He was no sooner qualified when he began to acquire the wanderlust for travel. In 1968, he set off on his first adventure to Lorette in Spain, where he worked as a barman. The next adventure was in 1969 to Israel, where with a group of friends, he lived in a kibbutz. He was there shortly after the Six Days War, when Israel invaded its neighbours, Syria, Egypt and Jordan. As a 19-year-old youth, this dramatic experience must have made a lasting impression, which probably influenced his political outlook for many years to come. Australia followed the Israel trip, a country he was to visit on three occasions. South Africa was the next port of call, again a country in political turmoil at the height of the problems with apartheid. Nelson Mandela was in jail on Robin Island for trying to effect his revolution to transform a model of racial oppression into an open democracy. Peter had arrived with ideals of social justice and must have been very shocked at his findings. He worked on the country's oil rig platforms. On his travels, he did take with him a sketch pad and a set of watercolours. This was not for his own use but was given to all his companions for them to add an artistic memento to remind him of his worldly travels and friendships. The decision to settle down came in 1976, when eventually a close friend, Danielle, was bequeathed a small farmstead in the south of France. The two companions decided to develop the establishment and breed a flock of sheep. It was during this period 
decided that Peter met his future wife, Linda, and soon they were to be married. Peter and Linda arrived at the ceremony in a donkey and trap, as befitted their lifestyle. This ideal partnership has flourished thereafter as half the sheep. From time to time, the travellers gather again to recount tales of journeys past. Few will have found the peace and contentment of Peter. This is a very special man, a truly good shepherd. I was young when I left home, caught up in out of rambling round. 